When we had last left this cop, whose name may be Harry, they talked to all of the union members, or at least one of them, the hardy boy and the gardener, who actually turned out not to be a gardener, but instead a union member counselor, who was actually pretty damn aggressive and wasn't very happy to be dealing with the police understandably enough. Nonetheless, after speaking with them, did the two travel back out to the back of the Whirling in Rags, finally to attempt to pull down the body or at least investigate it closer. Upon closer investigation, the cop barfed in a major way and they had to go pick up some ammonia in order to do it without the barfing. This is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Oh, also the boots were really weird and cool. Let's take another look. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and white boots. His skin is marbled with decaying veins and botched by lividity. On his chest, a fading web of tattoos. The cargo belt used to hang him from the tree looks reinforced. Let's inspect the belt. Sorry. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Electrochemistry, medium success. Oh my, there's something on the belt. A familiar word that speaks to the thirst within you. What was that? A word? Vermilion, in yellow letters along the length of the twisting cargo belt. Why did that interact with our electrochemistry? Huh. Only a deep longing for vermi vermilion golden spirits lets you decipher the fading logo of the local brewery. I should get a drink. This is a bad time for a drink, right? Let's say that. Extremely. What kind of rope is this? Industrial strength. The kind used for tying cargo to lorries. Inland Empire challenging success. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. Like in a harbor? Like in a circus for transporting black spotted giraffes. In a... I can't come up with anything other than a harbor. Let's say this. Why not? What a weird-ass thing to say. Like in a circus for transporting black-spotted giraffes. Um, he considers it. No, more like in a harbor. Like the one just east of here. I get the sense they used whatever was on hand, without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it? They sure wanted him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. How did they even get him up there? Back off and look at the corpse. I mean, by using that, they sure do make it obvious, like, who may have done it, right? And to hang it here so close to the harbor? I mean, maybe that is the case, you know? Occam's razor and all that shit, right? Oh, look, does snow actually collect as it begins to snow? Did that just happen? Is, is there actually snow, like, collecting on the ground, making it wider? Maybe? In, like, little splotches and all that? Huh. All right. Let's see. I think we can exhaust all of this, so let's just start from the top. We're assuming dock workers from the harbor did it? I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. He politely raises an eyebrow. You? Inland Empire medium success. Now, you feel like it was something else. But what? Makes sense. Believably mundane. I feel like it was something else. Don't ask me, I'm just lumbering from one moment to the next. <laughs> I don't know. I do kind of feel like it was something else. Why not? Yes, he covers his nose. It often is. This belt worries me. They sure wanted him to stay there. The polyester seems strong. It's not merely polyester. 
its steel reinforced. He rises to inspect the noose. See these lines. This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. Is, do you call them rabbits? I have no idea. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. How did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. He points to the buckle tying the belt to the branch above. Did they climb up using the kid's ladder? Point to the one at the side of the tree. Ooh, new skill point, got some XP. Level up. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. He makes a pulling motion. Back off and look at the corpse. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs, limp, and torso covered in tattoos. Inspect the tattoos. I like how it does this with it, um, you know, leading us into the next one, assuming we're going in order from one through seven. Let's inspect the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches from the torso, ac across the, the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. Inland Empire medium success. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Oh my god. Physical instrument medium success. Your fist clenches suddenly. It will be marked by bullet holes. It will be riddled with disco. Ooh. Which do I want? Hmm. It will be riddled with disco. Right. Sort of tying back to the disco ball situation we saw. Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. Is this a map of the night sky? Is this a microelectronic system? Is this a national pattern? Is this a map of the night sky? A map of the stars. He turns around to breathe before inspecting it closer. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century, Mycenaean maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized, somehow. Conceptualization, easy success. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. Yeah, and we could never look at the sky to tell. <laughs> it's an isometric game. I'm missing something here. So am I. A sudden ringing fills the air as the lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. <gasps> it's the... the duo... Domama, Daquaka, Daqua. <laughs> oh. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminum... aluminum foil... er, a, a thin piece of milled aluminum from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A Trigat Sunshine Mini. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. Suggestion medium success. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. I have only two ampules, 
so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting, then... Holy shit. Oh my god, look at that. Whew, what does that say at the top? LFD standard. Non-flammable. Trigat moment. Hmm. How come it almost looks like a head right here? Right? It almost looks like the outline of his head? Someone's head. Weird. A sound. A shrill flash. Followed by the breaking of a small ampule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper rolling out. On it, a color-perfect copy of the dead man's tattooed chest. In case we need it, the lieutenant says and shakes the paper, letting it dry in the cold wind. Cool machine. Yes. He slides the camera closed and tucks it away on his belt. It is pretty cool, isn't it? What do we need this photo for? <clears throat> New task, the victim's tattoos. Oh shit, do we know anyone who would know about star shit? Huh. <clears throat> Someone who is into, like, astronomy or something? I don't even know. Maybe there's books at the bookstore? Otherwise, I have no clue. It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter to us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later. Without the corpse smell. Say nothing. Can I have it? Wow, well, he gave it to me. Item gained. Instant photo of tattoos. Sure. Just don't lose it. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. The glassy eyed corpse looks by. His mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There's no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head, his face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Empathy, medium success. Underneath the curdled meat, there is an expression, not carried on his features, but below, inside. An expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. This man enjoyed the moment of death. Inland Empire medium. Tell me, who are you, dead man? Plus one, talked in your dream. Oh, shit, reactivity because we didn't come here and do this on the first day, but we had the dream where he spoke to me as myself, right? Tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Where have you gone? I can see you're gone, but who are you? What is happening? I hate you. You stink, and you're boring. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Enough. Well, we are we really talking to this thing? Are we having a Twin Peaks moment for real? Where have you gone? Into the wild pale yonder. Where is that? In the past, way out in the west. Huh. I can't get the damn compartment in my ledger open. Why would he... What? Why would we say that to him? No, let's say it. I can't get the damn compartment in my ledger open. The blue heart? Oh, that's good shit. You'll love it. Just press down and fuck it open like you always do. Fuck it hard. 
What? Cop Opo the Clown? Physical instrument. Easy success. He means force. It'll work. Okay, cool. So now maybe we have another chance at that. Well, I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. You are now. But who were you when you were alive? There's nothing funny about you. There's nothing funny about jokes, either. Who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker and a killer. Half-light, medium success. Takes one to no one. Who fuck. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Cabo. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Horrific necktie. Yeah, man. Don't be crazy. Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoonie. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? No, I'm good. Yeah, give me questions. Give me a comical amount of questions. Yeah, give me a comical amount. Coming right up, copperoonie Rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no, you're no Rooney. I do strike myself as a Rooney. Rooney is obviously not who I am. Of course not, the name is Raphael Ambrosius Costeau. <laughs> Let's go with that. Listen to yourself. You're not Raphael anything. You're probably just Harry or something. That's right. Harry. Yeah, just like in the dream. I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. No, it can't be Harry. I refuse. Could I really be Harry? I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. You might be onto something there. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in, Brother Capo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Labo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? I don't have anything else to do. This case is all I have. Because he told me to. Nod toward Kim. Maybe this will lead to something. Something indescribable, unforeseen, miraculous. Because he told me to, nod toward Kim. You're a lying sack of shit, Capo. You're doing this because there is nothing else to do. Everything else is over. It's just me now. Ooh, that's so good. That is such great shit right there that we just read. I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? Hmm. A deep sea creature. A baby affected with harlequinism. You don't remind me of anyone. <laughs> Let's say this, the biggest lie of all. You don't remind me of anyone. Sure I do. You just don't want to admit it. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Ooh, we actually got XP. Maybe I was getting my rocks off. First, do you have to speak like that? What dialect is that anyway? Huh? So, you were feeling sexual arousal when they were hanging you? Forget it. Was this guy into, like, autoerotic asphyxiation? Come on. Really? Hmm. What dialect is that anyway? Maybe we'll get some info here. 
It's a mishmash, Capabolo. You think I'm Messinian, don't you? For you, this is how people from Messina speak like. I'm not even sure what Messina is. Are you? From Messina? I'm not even sure what that is. Well, I'm not from Messina, am I? My hair is too light a shade of brown. Trust your inner racist. What? What are you, racist now too? I always trust my inner racist. He shows me the score. What are you, racist now too? You think I am? You think I was a racist because this lump looks military and has tattoos? That's called profiling. Huh. So, you were feeling sexual arousal when they were hanging you? Do I look like an autoerotic... Uh, do I look like an erotic autoasphyxiation type to you? <laughs> what is erotic autoasphyxiation? I feel like we have ended up in a weird state of, of the world where most people do know exactly what this is. What is it, though? Captain Capadromo, I fear we're drifting away. Fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. Let's go back with that. Sexual arousal? No, you don't. Okay, same thing. Enough. You can come back and look into this face anytime you want. Oh, no, he's still talking. You can come back and look into this face anytime you want. Ask me your little questions. Freshen your memory. Create associations. Remind yourself of your mortality. Kapalopo. That's not the same dialect that Kuno S speaks, right? Is it? Squint and take a step back. Big picture. Ooh, the camera did it as well. Who put that bird shit up there too? One of the kids? As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Observe. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fattened hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I'm squinting, Kim. Why am I doing this? How should I know why you're squinting, officer? Squint harder. His face and hands are pink. Thighs, too. The rest is greenish. Stop squinting. I don't know either. Maybe I should just stop. <laughs> Squint harder. His face and hands are pink. Thighs, too. The rest is greenish. Oh, he snorts. You're trying to assess lividity. Relax your eyes. We're having like, um, like our muscle memory kick in, I guess is what it is. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color, coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So, what do you think? I think he's dead. I don't know what to think. What do you think? Cover your nose. Something is coming out of him. He's beaten up. See the bruises? Hmm. Yeah, let's go with that. He's beaten up. See the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot! He means you fucked him up good, Kuno, the girl yells. Fucked him up, brutal like. I think he's dead. Hmm, cover your nose. Something is coming out of him. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it. Drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <laughs> Talking about shit! We got lucky. Maybe he went to the toilet 
sometime before death. <laughs> Damn right I'm a uh, turn around and yell. <laughs> Should we say that? Huh. Maybe we got lucky. Or should we ignore him? I don't know. Part of me wants to just say. Like, why the fuck not? Because that is often... I don't know. That's sort of often my own self-defense to similar situations in real life is to just lean into it. I don't know. And maybe that's for better or worse. I don't know. Let's see. Damn right I'm a... Uh, turn around and yell. Malicious laughter erupts in the yard. Sounds like seagulls. Pig said he's a... The lieutenant's face is made of stone. <laughs> All right. So I guess it kind of worked. All right. I think he's dead. I agree. Suggestion, medium success. There are crow's feet in his eyes. He's laughing silently. Totally dead. Totally this buster's not coming back. dead -a -dee, dead 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 What is dead anyway? <laughs> Let's say that. What is dead anyway? He is. He points to the corpse. Ooh, I like that. I don't know what to think. What do you think? I think he was upright immediately after her death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet and his neck. He points to his fattened chin. The noose acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis here is in tune with the hanging. That's what I think. Yep, sounds like a... seems like a lynching to me. Could it still be he was moved after death? Maybe he was strangled by someone. Could it still be he was moved after death? There's always a chance. We could check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. All right, back off and catch your breath. But there is no breath to catch, only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. So, how do we get him down? He stops to think, then checks his notes. Are you sure we've finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's down. Step back and have another look. We've been thorough. Do you have a plan for getting him down? Proceed. Now let's take another look. Why not? Okay. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. I have something I need to know, corpse man. Nah, it's all the same weird shit from before. Enough. Yeah, the preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down from there. Oh, shit. Hang on, he said something different. Come back later, capo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. Ooh. Yeah, the preliminary examination is done. Let's get him down from there. Task complete. Inspect victim's body. Sony XP. Hmm. The steel-reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. New task. Getting the body down. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do so, there's the question of cutting it. Can't we... can't someone else do it? We could saw the branch. Seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. Maybe we could shoot him down. Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor. I'm out of ideas. Let's have another look at him. Can't someone else do it? Someone else? He pauses. You mean like the police? Yes, exactly. Call the police. You have a point there. <laughs> I mean, someone who's below detective. <laughs> Let's say that. I mean, someone who's below detective. Someone like a paid garbage man or cleaning crew. I have bad news for you. That is a detective. I know it's hard, but I assure you, 
the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down fast. We could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch. Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down off the trees. Hmm. Seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. <laughs> no, we have to get him down. Let's see. Maybe we could shoot him down? Yeah! The enthusiasm is unrestrained. Bang, bang time, pigs! Shoot his head off! The lieutenant remains unaffected. How? I don't know. Just, you know. Shoot up there, maybe. Point towards the branch. Shoot the belt. The bullet will break it. Hmm. Maybe the branch? Shoot the branch? The worry is if we shoot the belt. Are we that good of a shot? Uh, my character certainly is not. And what's behind it? What's the trajectory of that? Maybe the branch. Yeah, I'll point towards the branch. Yes. He corrects his glasses. The buckle, where it ties the cargo belt to the tree. If the shot hits that, there might be a small chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking! Entertain the Kuno with some shit! They'll miss! The pigs will miss, Kuno! Suggestion medium success. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other hand, it's an awfully stupid idea. Take the shot, lieutenant. What's the worst thing that could happen? Actually, don't. It has bad idea written all over it. Wait, let me try. Say nothing. Let him choose. I don't know how. Maybe it's better not to. Yeah, let him choose. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket. Oh shit, he's gonna fucking take the shot. Ooh, it's like a black powder weapon or whatever? And produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. He then steps back and assumes the fellow Tess's position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Easy does it, partner. Shoot that motherfucker down. Say nothing. Let's not break his concentration. He's gonna fucking mi- the kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, Damn it. Empathy, medium success. He feels bad about it, about his eyes mostly, just having bad eyesight, probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. Kuno S. Fucking idiot! S s whatever that word is, I have no idea. Asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? It's okay, man. Damn it, get your shit together. Try again, maybe? What now? Hmm. Whatever you do, do not console him. Okay. Yeah, this is one of those situations where it's someone who's typically good at shit. Like, for me, my character, I'm just, like, fucking bad at everything, so it's, like, no big deal whenever I fuck up, right? But for the lieutenant, it's fucking different, right? This is why in real life as well, I always try to <laughs> present myself as being not as bad of a fuck up as uh, our character here, but as being a bit of a fuck up, right? That way, if I'm if I have a fall, it's not so bad, right? I have no <laughs> I have no pride to lose. <laughs> All right, try again, maybe. Nah, let's just say what now. I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. So he must be pretty poor then as well, right? Although he's got some good shit. Like, he, he's probably not, like, as poor as we are, 
but he's probably not well off because he doesn't even have glasses that are perfectly suited for him, right? Huh. Let's see. Can I have the gun? I should try. Good God, I really should not. My motorix is like my lowest skill of all. Let's see. Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appear to be suspects in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Half-Light, medium success. Confirmed. It's unsafe. But what else can we do? Commit to it. Yeah, wait. Let's reconsider. Consider the other options first. Hmm. Okay. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like a chicken on a skewer. Seems like a lot of hassle. Let's not do it. We're not getting him down already. Not getting him down is a task that's already accomplished. Sadly, it is not our job to keep him up there, but to get him down. I don't really want to pull his head off. Oh yeah, I could do that. How do you plan to get him down then? With social sensibility? Are you going to educate him down? Maybe I should pull his head off then. Fuck it. With the shoe. I could do that. Fuck it, I'll try and shoot him too. <laughs> Why not? Can I have the gun? I should try. It's bad as it is. Us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses, then shrugs, and proceeds to load the pistolet. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. The piece shines in his outstretched hand. They only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen! Take the gun. Ooh, shit. A casual A9 armistice. Yeah, take the fucking shot! Uh... Banani Poika? Take it and shoot it. Shoot yourself in the mouth. Feel the weight first. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your finger fits right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth. Half light, medium success. Kuno is silent. Aggression gathers in the air. The trigger feels delicate and ready to break under your finger. Point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Why don't you shoot yourself in your mouth? She hisses. At least you won't miss. Oh, God. 8% <laughs> chance. Empathy. Challenging success. This isn't mere boundary pushing. There's a true suicidal rage in the kid as she's provoking you. Let's see. Sh say, shut up. Pull the trigger. Close your left eye first. Point the gun at Kuno S. Holy shit. Give the gun back to Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Say, shut up. Or what? You gonna fuck me? Her voice is almost a whisper now. You wanna fuck me, pig? Is that what this is about? 8%. Let's see, close your left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the morning light as the corpse slowly rotates. Volition, medium success. As you wait, your breathing slows down. Some mosquito-like organism buzzes in your peripheral. Look! He's crying! You gonna cry now? Fucking brr brr Let's see. Plus one, breathing slowed. 17%. I don't think I should try and take it. Hmm. Right? Because we're not just fucking around here. This is a fucking gun, right? Ugh, I'll just pull this fucking whole head off and shit, right? I'll do that. Give the gun back to Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I agree. 
The lieutenant holsters the weapon with a quick move. Enough gunslinging for today. For today. But what about the body? We need to access the harbor and ask the leader of the Union to have it taken down. They have the tools, and they have the men. Why didn't we just begin with that? I did not want us to be indebted to Everard Clare. I wanted us to be able to deal with it ourselves. That is clearly not the case. We need help. You need to suck my dick! Why the fuck am I still alive? What's wrong with being indebted to Everard Clare? He's a dangerous and corrupt man. We cannot predict what he will want from us in return. Okay. Hmm. Maybe I can just pull it down, though. From the shoe. Can I just give it a pull? Let's see. Inspect the boots. Whoops, wrong thing. Oh shit, what was that? Huh. Oh, we're right, the word. Okay, ignore it. It's hard, but you somehow manage not to see it. The corpse looks uh, at you sideways from an unnatural angle. Okay, all stuff we've seen before, my bad. Giraffes, yep, back off and look at the corpse. The boots. Okay. They're out of place. The boots, yep, yep, yep. What kind of armor is this? Okay. Pull the boot off. This feels dangerous, are you sure? Grab the boot under your arm. The stench fills your nostrils as you push downward. An ominous creaking sound comes from above. Yep, stop, he doesn't want me to. Pig's gonna pull his head off. Lieutenant, you seem distressed. Why? You're about to pull his head off. <laughs> Do it! I'm gonna pull his head off, right? Yes, that's what I said. You'll comp compromise the coroner's case if you do. So please don't. Well, would you rather- Which would you rather want? I can compromise the case, or we can compromise the case by being indebted to Everard. What are you trying to achieve anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? Let's see. These boots would go super well with my bell-bottom pants. This is advanced enemy technology. Are we not detectives? Hmm. Let's see. Fuck. This is like a great moment for me to be a dumbass and just pull him down though, right? I think I should go down this route. Let's see. Hmm. These boots are super well- <laughs> These boots would go super well with my bell-bottom pants. You do not understand the boots are steeped in cadaverine odor, don't you? Or you do understand. So are my pants! Can't I just wash them? You're right. I didn't think this thing through. It was an impulse thing. Can't I just wash them? You'd have to boil them in acid. Besides, the lieutenant taps on the boot. There's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in the boots has been flowing down in- uh, on the- in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They're fused with his feet. Okay. What's going to happen to the boots then? Shit, okay, I can't pull it off. Okay, I have no choice in it. Alright, very well. Leave. Huh. Let's check our shit here. Get the body down. Access the harbor and ask for Everard Claire's help. Let's see. What is my... It's hand-eye coordination, right? Fuck, we have plus one motorix base as well. Let's see here. Do I have anything reducing my motorix? I don't. Do I have anything that could buff it? Interfacing, reaction speed, physical instruments, suggestion... Eh, nothing. Okay. Let's move these things around. Oh, the instant photo of tattoos. Right. Lieutenant Kitsuragi snapped this photo of the hanged man's tattoos. It displays the intricate web of blue lines stretching across his torso. You have to admit, it looks quite cool. Okay, let's interact with our ledger and pull that shit out of it. We have to fuck it right out of there. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. With the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip. Then, made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. 
All right. Oh, shit. Don't we have something that gives us extra bullshit for interfacing? Oh, shit. I think we do. Hang on. Put the ledger away. Or was it something that reduced our interfacing? Yeah, our yellow gloves gives us a bonus to interfacing. Okay. Let's equip those. Good. And then... Let's try and pull this shit, huh? There we are. Interact. Yep, yep, yep. Open it. 42% chance. Come on, almost 50. I've made harder to nail shots in XCOM. Open the hidden compartment in the clipboard. Fuck yes! Oh, I did it. Interfacing medium success. Just relax. The two sides of the board are slightly misaligned. Like a drawer that's come off the sides. These slides, I should say. All you need to do is bend the plastic on your knee. Slowly. The slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know, slide the drawer open. Wait, somehow I don't want to. Fuck no, put the ledger away. Slide the drawer open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. What's inside? Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Pick up the ticket stubs. Pick up the card. Proceed. Fucking kill yourself, you asshole. Close the, close the permeables compartment. Wow, were these for my significant other? Pick up the ticket stubs. Two octopuses are smiling. This is the second time we've had octopuses referenced as well, remember? Before there was someone saying like, yeah, it was Joyce, right? An octopus, I said that I would slay. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to a zoo in Ravishall East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there too. Pick up the card. Proceed. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. Smell it first. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavored. Open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped round letters in a woman's hand. Harry, it begins. You already, you're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Volition. Easy success. Throw it away, please. But reading it will make me happy. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Ravishall, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel, you feel the cards slipping into it. Shivers, medium success. Let go. What was that? Throw the card in the wind. Hold on to it. Read the card. We're reading it. Your hands shake, holding on to it. Every morning, when I step out in your sleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I, f I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step on the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. The bow collector. Bow collector? I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. Keep reading. You... You... Every step... I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul. And I will always, always, always come back to it. Keep reading. Kisses, kisses, kisses. Uh-oh. That's not good. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs.
and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Small, white dots appear. Item lost, damaged ledger. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. Endurance, easy success. No, no, hold on. Hold on, fall sideways. Let's hold on. I think we're about to fucking die. Endurance. To what? There's nothing. Detective, is everything alright? Fall sideways. Oh my god, did I just die? Is that instant death if I read that? Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! Begin! There is nothing. Wow! What? What the fuck? It didn't even boot me back to the main menu and made me restart from here. I got it. Oh. We didn't restart. Nothing? Just lie there, passed out. Nothing. Nothing, said brother. No treachery. Just blackout. Just lie there, passed out. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. Who's that? That's me. Blue eyes. That's me. And who was that? Who was what? He speaks of the sickening longing. The unwell emotion. Even in the darkness he's grasping for it. Still trying to hold on to the great sorrow slipping in the water. Slimy. Yeah. That's the stuff. No, I was cool. I'm cool. Hmm. Yeah, that's the stuff. I'm, I am still trying to hold on to the great sorrow slipping in the water. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. Because it's always there. White morning. What was the... X something? The... Where is Voyager Road? Enough. Just lie there, motionless. Where is Voyager Road? There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Pause. What was the X something? The... Bloated corpse of the past resurfacing? No, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape, its lack of beauty was not the problem. Enough. Just lie there, motionless. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules? No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. I'm not coming back. What is that? It's cold. Yes, they're pouring something on you, something in you, and it's... Ooh. The Kupri Kanima. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. Where am I? In the upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. Water. The lieutenant is extending a small canister to your mouth. Drink. Killed some health, but I didn't need any. The water is cold. Silvery. The stuff of life itself, as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Drink. He tilts the canister. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol? Oh no, wait. He's saying this. You haven't drunk water in two days. 
Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. Drink. With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. What happened? I should ask you the same. I came in contact with the burnt-out ruins of the past, Lieutenant. I was dehydrated. It won't happen again. I... Fuck it. Start climbing out of the motor car. I should ask you the same. You were reading your paperwork. Then you passed out. I carried you to my Kanima to take you to a hospital. Then you came to. How long was I out? Ten minutes, maybe. Huh. Now, let's be honest. I came in contact with the burnt-out ruins of my past, Lieutenant. Conclude. That does sometimes happen. He hands you the remains of your ledger. Item gained. Ledger of failure and hatred. You drop this. Are you okay to proceed? Let's solve this case. Leave. 5 XP. Good. Tutorial Agent. The Ledger of Failure and Hatred is a special item that can be used both as an interactable and a tool equipped in your hand for skill bonuses. Find it under the tools section in your inventory. Holy shit. So what does it do? Whoa, minus two authority, plus one inland empire, plus one empathy. This is the same ledger you found in the trash, only worse somehow. It makes you think about the letter, about the woman's handwriting, about not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. Note, mouse over the item to see its effects. Yep, it definitely has some effects. I'm going to hold it. All right. Let's see, what have we got here? White Morning. Temporary Research Bonus. Minus one authority. Little guy gets further and further away. Huh. Problem. You see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter. At the mention of what? A great white object, letting out its sweet smell, like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Holy shit. I should probably internalize that. I feel like I should. I have the skill points available. Let's do it. I'm going to internalize it. I love misery. Holy shit, that was fucking wild what just happened, by the way. That was so cool, it was like a fake ending to the game. Alright. And I do enjoy that gives me additional shit to these stats. But also, um... Reduces our authority, because I hate having authority. Honestly. Let's see. We could take off our necktie. We don't need that anymore. Honestly, I'm surprised it even let me. But maybe I should keep it on. I kind of am enjoying Inland Empire. Half the time, at least. <laughs> Alright. Well, that was a fucking trip and a half. Grim shit happening, huh? Good god. Maybe we should hold this in our other hand. Right? Seems more natural to me as someone who is right-handed. Okay. Good. Well, I suppose when next we come back... I don't fucking know. I guess we need to strike some sort of deal? Maybe we could go check in on Plaisance's place? And try to barge through the door? Before we go check on all that stuff? I don't know. There's also these people down here that we could ask about the cord. 
or the um, the cargo belt. There's uh, there's a lot of stuff opening up. It's interesting. I love how this all takes place in this small area, and more and more, it's just adding depth to this one small section. Right? We're not like globe trotting or anything like that. Very fun. Very much enjoyed. I think um, it's not so much that it's, it's necessary. It's that it's unexpected, right? Because so many games have you, like, tra traveling some big area, or they span the course of some big uh, sweeping landscape or whatever. But it's kind of cool to have one that just takes place, not even in a city. Like, you know, like your, uh, your Grand Theft Autos or whatever. But even just, like, this small district, just a few roads and alleyways, right? At least so far. I'm assuming now that really the entirety of the game could take place in places in this map, right? Holy hell. All right, well, until next time, please take care of each other.